have been better had the referendum been explicitly advisory? If that had been made clearer, then Parliament had very clearly been given the duty of sorting out whatever came out of it. Shall I have a go? Uh, yeah. I, I, I think there were, there were two possibilities. If, if you had had a, an advisory referendum, or indeed if you'd fixed uh, a minimum threshold, mm -hmm. so you needed to get 60%, I think you would have had a higher relief vote in that scenario. Um, but you may still not have had um, a, a sufficient number to meet the threshold. I think that would have been quite an interesting discipline on a government mm -hmm. charged with trying to yeah. secure some actual significant change as opposed to the sort of nubitary reforms that David Cameron came back with and said, look what I've got. Um, so I, I, mean, I, I think it would have been a very interesting scenario. And, you know, I guess probably most of us were not instinctively keen on referendum as a, mm -hmm. a means of making uh, decisions. Uh, it was some, somewhere where we ended up. Um, that's such an so, ominous sound, that BBC headline. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, I think you know, anyway, it would have been, would have been very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Burst. <laughs> Gavin? I, I sort of feel that the, the referendum was advisory, technically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it was for Parliament to decide how to implement it, but I just think, so I, I, I am absolutely in the category that Lisa talked about, right? so I, I, I wasn't someone who favoured leaving. I, I was someone who supported having a referendum, um, and having campaigned for a man, I very strongly believed that Parliament was obligated to do, to vote in line with what the public had voted, as a, as a matter of simple democratic principle. Um, and actually, my job, Graham, Graham will know this very well, my job was quite difficult because I'd been on the Remain side. Mm. Um, because I think once once Theresa's solution became unpopular with at least a significant chunk of Leave Sporting MPs, the fact that her chief of staff was from the Remain one of the party didn't help her. Mm. Uh, it certainly didn't help me in terms of persuade someone. Um, so no, I don't I don't and I, and I, I don't also like referenda where you've got to get 60% because if, I mean, you know, if you get a result that's, well, if you get 52, 48, and then you say the 48 win, mm -hmm. that, just doesn't, that doesn't strike me as a kind of tenable issue. What I think is a more interesting question is whether the legislation could have required leave to set out some basic parameters about what the relationship would be afterwards, because that would have helped a lot. If, if the leave campaign had said, we're campaigning for this kind of Brexit, it would have been much harder for those MPs that were trying to argue for a second referendum to say people weren't clear what they were voting for. Um, but whether the, whether the Leave campaign would easily have been able to do that, I don't know, because the, probably within that, within the within the people that were campaigning for Leave, there were probably a range of views about the kind of Brexit that they wanted. Yeah. Advisory? I take quite a simplistic view of this. I think it's very hard to explain.